began with the Big Bang approximately 13.8 billion years ago. It is omnipresent in our world. We understand everything based on it. It is engraved into our consciousness, allowing us to understand what the past, the present, and the future are. It governs our lives. Not only are our daily schedules based on it, but everything we do is based on it. It gives our lives order and meaning. It gives the world order. It builds us and it decays us. It defines who we are, when we were born and when we will eventually die. We have feelings and relationships based on it, based on past experiences and present day events. Although we sometimes are condemned by our past, we cannot change one speck of our past even though some people waste away their lives trying. Welcome to our video on time. Time makes us who we are and makes matter what it is. For example, film a car speeding down a road. Speed up the image faster and faster until the car is sped up infinitely and the car disappears. So what proof do we have of the car's existence? Time gives legitimacy to its existence. Time is the only true unit of measure. It gives proof to the existence of matter. Without time, we don't exist. And yet time seems to pass us by like the river's ceaseless flow. Standing on the banks, we watch as our past and present disappear down the river and eagerly await for the future that draws near. We may try to stop this, but the mighty river's currents can never be stopped and no one has ever succeeded to do so. Eventually, we fall into the depths, no matter how hard we try and struggle, and we die, never to see the mighty river again. It's the end of our existence. Two different views of time exist. The first that we're all familiar with is subjective time. Time flows from the past to the present to the future and is viewed from within. The second is objective time, where time is a fixed series of events and all the events, past, present, and future, can be viewed from outside the line and are all occurring simultaneously. According to Augustine, a Western religious philosopher, only this instant we call the present exists and is real. The past and future do not. They only exist as mental pictures of what will be. Augustine stated, God's time is different than ours. He has no past and future. Rather, God's time is objective and is stretched out before him like a line that he can see. God is all-knowing because he is outside of time. We ourselves do not have God's view of time. We are immersed in time's waters. The future becomes the present for an instant, and then becomes a frozen, unchangeable past. Knowing these two different views of time, which one should be attempted to embrace, our own or God's? For many individuals, the concept of subjective time can cause pain and suffering. We lose those we love and watch our special moments dissipate into the darkness of the past, never to be seen again. We see young people age and watch death play its part. Life seems meaningless. Once the time of your death has come, you will experience an endless void for all eternity. Subjective time is depressing to contemplate. However, if we can attempt to embrace it and live it, objective time 
eases pain and suffering. We will realize that nothing changes and nobody dies. Everything that happens is still there, as every single moment happens at once. We can come to see how God sees it. Nothing is ever lost. Everything remains and endures. In fact, many philosophers say that subjective time is an illusion, and only objective time exists. The flow of time experienced in the subjective realm is an illusion. For a North American, time flows fast, like a mountain river in the spring. And if you want to benefit from its passing, you have to move fast with it. We are people of action, and we cannot bear to be idle. The past is over, but the present you can seize. Parcel and package make it work for you in the immediate future. Europeans have a similar concept, except they are multi-active rather than linear active. The more that they can do at once, the happier and more fulfilled they feel. In, in some Middle Eastern cultures, however, the adaption of humans to time is seen as a viable alternative. In these cultures, time is viewed neither as linear nor event relationship related, but as cyclic. Each day the sun rises and sets, the seasons fall one after another, the heavenly bodies revolve around us. People grow old and die, but their children reconstitute this process. In Madagascar, the Malagasy tribe imagine the future as flowing into the back of their heads or passing them from behind, then becoming the past as it stretches out in front of them. The past is in front of their eyes because it is visible, known, and influential. They can look at it, enjoy it, learn from it, and even play with it. By contrast, the Malagasy consider the future unknowable. It is behind their head, where they do not have eyes. Their plans for this unknown area will be far from meticulous. For what can they base it on? Animals, on the other hand, have completely different perceptions of time than humans. Although we may never know how they truly experience time, research has found that most animals experience time in slow motion. After learning all these ways that these cultures view time, we must ask ourselves, is there truly a constant universal time? If we were to take two atomic clocks and synchronize them to read the same time, we would know that we could leave them to tick away for years, and that it would still remain at the same time. But if we separated these two clocks and took one of them on a spaceship traveling approximately 95% the speed of light for one year, something extraordinary would happen. While one year would pass on the spaceship's clock, approximately three years would pass on the Earth's clock. Now keep in mind, the clock itself isn't running slower on the spaceship, but time itself is slower due to the relative speed of the spacecraft. To answer the original question, is there a constant universal time? The answer is clearly no. We all experience time passing at different speeds, relative to our speed in relation to one another. And the strength of any gravitational field that we may happen to be Since there is clearly no universal time, and everyone perceives time differently, is time even real? Philosopher Immanuel Kant asserted that all time is unreal. 
Our everyday experiences are just chaotic sensations that our mind attempts to categorize with some sense of order. Time is merely the filing cabinet in the mind that inserts each experience in an orderly fashion as we experience them. Kant stated that our minds merely create time so that our minds can understand what our sensations mean in an orderly way. is simply an image. He stated that concepts cannot define reality, rather, only what we directly experience is real. What we experience within ourselves is a flow, an encounter within, that makes us feel like we are changing and flowing through time. For Bergson, time is real, but only subjective time. Objective reality is merely an image. When looking over all these different views of time, it is difficult to form a solid conclusion on what time truly is. We know that nothing can exist without time including matter and ourselves. We can look at time with different perspectives. One that humans can achieve is subjective time, where time flows and is viewed from within. The other, that God can only achieve, is objective time, where time is a fixed series of events occurring simultaneously. There are drawbacks for having each of these views. While subjective time is depressing to contemplate, Objective time eases pain and suffering, but is impossible to truly achieve. Although these are the two main views of time, different cultures have different variations of these views. Looking at all the unique views of time, we can conclude that there is no universal time, since that time is relative to one's view of it, as well as the relative speed to one another. Therefore, one can only hypothesize on what they know and perceive when attempting to form a solid conclusion on time. Thank you for watching our video on time. We hope that you can make the most out of your time on this world before your time runs out.